this is a video uh, explaining the chromatography section of uh, F324 um, in the analysis module. Uh, I'm going to look at chromatography and how it can separate mixtures, uh, how we can use RF values and retention times to help us identify mixtures, and also look at um, the uses and some of the limitations of these techniques. So first of all, uh, chromatography in always involves a stationary phase which doesn't move, and this could be a solid thin layer in TLC chromatography, or a liquid or solid uh, in a column in gas chromatography, and a mobile phase which moves. Uh, this could be a liquid or a gas in all types of chromatography. And the mobile phase basically flows through the stationary phase and carries the components of the mixture with it. Okay, so chromatography using a solid stationary phase, and this is a, a thin layer chromatography and also uh, some forms of gas chromatography, the mixture is separated by adsorption. That's not absorption, but adsorption, ab adsorption where the molecules uh, adsorb onto the surface of the stationary phase. And depending on the strength of that adsorption, uh, molecules get held back for a, a shorter or longer time. Obviously, molecules that don't adsorb very well pass through the stationary phase quite quickly. Uh, if you have a liquid stationary phase, uh, and that's in gas-liquid chromatography, then um, basically a thin layer of liquid coats the inside of the, the column and the components of the mixture dissolve in that liquid layer. And the more soluble they are, the obviously the more they'll dissolve and the more they'll get held back by the stationary phase, so they'll take longer to come through the column. Okay, so let's just talk about thin layer chromatography first of all. And here, stationary phase is a thin layer of paper or silica gel or uh, aluminium oxide. And the mobile phase is a liquid solvent such as uh, water or ethanol, uh, depending what it is that's being separated. And here we've got a picture, just to remind you. Uh, at time zero, we've got our different mixtures in, in small dots. Uh, just above the solvent uh, level. Uh, the solvent then moves up the paper or the silica gel uh, and carrying these components with it. Now the degree to which they adsorb onto the, the stationary phase, which is a solid in this case, uh, will, will determine how far they get up the uh, paper or silica gel slide. Uh, obviously, these three dots here have not absorbed much and have moved with the solvent quite happily, whereas these three dots uh, have obviously adsorbed onto the surface of the stationary phase and have not travelled very far. Now, to give a value to the sort of the proportion of time, we we work out the RF values, and that is simply uh, the distance travelled by the component divided by the distance travelled by the solvent. Um, and here, if we look at uh, this component here, this red die, you can see it's well, it's it has moved 1.7 centimeters, whereas the whole solvent has moved up to here, which is five centimeters. So the RF value is 1.7 divided by 5, 0.34. RF values will always be less than one because they're always a proportion of obviously the total distance. Um, now, in gas chromatography, uh, the stationary phase is either a thin layer of liquid or a solid, and the mobile phase is a carrier gas, such as helium or nitrogen. And here we have the setup. Here's our, our carrier gas, which can be the, the rate at which it flows can be changed using this dial here. Our sample being analysed gets injected here at the start of the column and then will get carried through down the column round and round. The column is quite long and as I said the inside of the column is either coated with a solid or a liquid and the components of the mixture 
will interact with that stationary phase um, and be slowed down to different degrees. And eventually they will come out the other end where they'll be detected and you get a printout to show the different components and their different retention times. Okay, um, so if you, when you inject your mixture, um, the components in the mixture might, might condense or absor absorb onto the stationary phase, they might dissolve in the liquid, or they might simply, you know, they're not soluble, they remain as the gas and they'll travel through very quickly with the carrier gas. The retention time tells us uh, the time it takes for a particular compound to travel from, uh, from the column, through the column, to the detector. Um, it's measured from the time at which the sample is injected uh, and when it appears at the other end uh, there will be a peak for this, the different compounds and different compounds will have different retention times. Uh, we, can re we can compare retention times uh, with retention times of known compounds to help us to identify them. Um, here's an example of a printout from a gas chrom chrom chromatogram um, here the time scale, sometimes the time scale is the other way around so just be careful when you see it um, uh, so here at time zero we've got our solvent coming through uh, sometimes you get a peak for the solvent, sometimes you don't but if there is a peak at time zero then that's what that is and then these are the peaks for our different combinations of mixture so, oops, sorry um, obviously this compound has got the shortest retention time it's come through in 2.5 minutes this one uh, linoleic acid has got the longest retention time um, we can see from the size of the peak that this is the substance that is the greatest quantity of in the sample um, there's possibly another sam another substance here or uh, and this is there's also very very little of the linoleic acid so it tells you the number of components and obviously the relative size of the peak tells you the relative amount of each component. Uh, now it does have limitations because obviously many things with similar um, functional groups and similar sizes will have similar retention times and if you don't know the compound, if it's a completely new compound or something you haven't come across before then there's no reference to compare it to. Now we can combine gas chromatography with mass spectroscopy, uh, which is imaginative, imaginatively called GCMS, and basically the mixture goes through the, ga the, grass, the gas chrom chromato chr chromatography apparatus, where it, they're separated, retention times may give us some information, and then they're passed, in, passed into a mass spectrometer, which can identify them quite accurately using MR the MR and uh, other computer and the, the spectral database. Uh, here, if you've forgotten, is a typical example of a mass spectrum. And obviously the MR is the value furthest to the right. Uh, and GCMS is used in a number of different uh, places, forensics, environmental analysis, airport security and space probes. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, got those bits of information down in your notes or you can go back and make sure you, that you do. Thank you.